What's going on, everybody? It's Javon.ca, and we are here again on another episode of 100 Ways to Make 100K. I got someone extremely special that I want to introduce you to. Now, they started off selling cell phones in a mall, then went to another company working for free, started their own, and these days, they even have payroll that's over 100 grand in a month. Now, one of the big emphasis in this episode is around employee culture and how we really treat the people on our team. He tells stories on how he made his first 100K, how he would have done it if he were to do it over again, some of the books and lessons that make him who he is today and some of the stories that he's learned along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't wait to introduce you to Mike Landry, aka Big Mike, but we'll give him an opportunity to introduce himself. So Javon, I don't know how to introduce myself. I never know how to introduce myself. When we get on calls with clients and it, it's, it goes around to, to my turn to talk to my, about me, I'm like, I really don't know what to say. I really should nail it down, but I always think, ah, oh, let's be authentic in the moment. Yeah. And so far it's worked, but it never quite does capture everything that you do because you know, I'll, um, I'll be the one that runs payroll here. I'll be the one making the sale here. I'll be the one doing the dishes here. I'll be the one taking the trash out here. Uh, so, you know, or the person that everyone complains to when the internet's too slow. <laughs> so I'm, I'm all of those things. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool, man. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about where we are and what this office is even for. Right, so uh, right now we're at the Influence Agency's office. It's, it's our third office in our company's history. We're almost seven years old. Um, we started off uh, at a, in a condo uh, on Adelaide Street that had the bedroom wall knocked down and it was about, it was four of us in there plus a realtor uh, named Steve Jelinek, who's a, a good and dear friend of ours. Shout out Steve. Uh, yeah, shout out Steve. Steve would be an interesting guy to talk to. Hey, maybe. If you, uh, if you give him the pass, my guest, my audience says, hey, I, we don't want any more realtors. You know, you, know when, you know when you're in a room or a situation, somebody comes in and they just give everyone energy? Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a Steve. Same with Danielle in the city. Yeah. She comes in, she gives you energy. Yeah, shout out so Danielle. These people, are, these people are, are incredible. So we're, we're all together. Um, and then eventually we hire our first employee and then we're like, we're gonna hire a second. Then we end up going to uh, Geary. Okay. So, so the, and the reason why I kind of take you on that journey is because there's like really two streets in Toronto that are like industrial-like. Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. does that mean? It means that the rents aren't so crazy, right? Because mm -hmm. you just gotta, you know, we got to be conscious of costs. Yeah. So Gary, I think it was like three thousand dollars a month, plus we got three parking spots. We had two thousand square feet. Wow. And at the time we were like, "Damn, this is expensive, but we can do it." Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> and and so you know we got to that place and we took over our second level and um, then the pandemic happened. Wow. And um, we we're like, okay, we're still growing during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. When the pandemic ends, whenever it ends. We, we're too big now for this office space. Yeah, so yeah. we're like, okay, um, where can we also, where can we get more space? Mm -hmm. Not too costly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the time when, when commercial landlords are shaking because they can't rent out anymore. Dude, they're still shaking right yeah, now. They're still especially, shaking right now. Especially with the nature of office, right? But especially in like 2020, yeah. you know. Right when COVID uh, was new. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. They didn't know when their offices would be filled again. Mm -hmm. So uh, we took that as an opportunity to go out there and find a space so that when eventually things came back to normal, yeah. we could bring people back to a place where like they'd be impressed to work, right? So this place was kind of a, a blank box, built a second unit, um, invested a lot of money into space so that people would be encouraged to, to, to come in, right? I think it's important for you to like your, your environment, right? Yeah. Uh, also clients love it. Clients yeah. come in here and they're like, ah, we love this space. And then some of our clients actually hold some of their internal meetings here just because it's a better location, right? Like they don't want to go up to uh, Thornhill. They don't want to go out to Vaughn. They yeah. don't want to go out to Richmond Hill yeah. or Markham or Scarborough. They're like, oh, if we can meet here, let's, let's do that. So mm -hmm. we're happy to be um, the kind of, I guess, partner that says, yeah, user space. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a nice space. It's, <laughs> if you guys check out a little bit of the behind the scenes that you could probably find on YouTube, um, you'll see like a little bit of an office tour that we did. So thank you so much for welcoming us, by the way. It's, uh, it's very nice. Yeah, I'm glad that you guys are here. So what is it that you guys do here exactly? Like, what are you, what are you guys selling? You know, sell me something, I'm buying. <laughs> so uh, we, we kind of landed as a team on um, 360 digital elevation, right? That's okay. the most broad way we can put it, right? Without yeah. getting into you know, the 20 different services we might offer to accomplish that goal, right? Okay. So, um, you know, we, we focus... Uh, just on digital marketing. So mm -hmm. whether that's things like, you know, Google ads, Facebook ads, social media management, website development, 
influence their marketing, anything that happens online. Yeah. From an advertising perspective, we do. And some services are, are right for certain clients. Mm -hmm. some, some clients will have all of the services. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what the goals are uh, and where their beliefs align with your beliefs on what's going to work. Cool. So how did you how do you even get into something like that? Uh, how did I get into like yeah, this, let's, this industry? Let's, let's dive into like a little bit about Big Mike's background. Oh, you know Big I mean? Mike. All right. Yeah. Because well, man, when we were talking, you're talking about I was selling cell phones, I was selling this, I was yeah. selling that. So how do you even how do you even get here? You know, because a lot of people might think about, oh man, this is this huge company, but you're a guy that's doing cool stuff. Well, first off, anyone that's listening to this needs to know that like I didn't do this alone. I did this with three partners that all contributed in, in ways that maybe I couldn't, mm -hmm. right? So it's uh, it's a team effort. But how I started was uh, my best friend who calls calls me Big Mike, kind of like really made that like my name at parties and in social situations. He's like, oh, this is Big Mike. And mm -hmm. I know, I'm going to come in the room and say, I'm Big Mike. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Someone else says it. So yeah. he says it. Uh, his name is Patrick. Shout out and, Pat. Yeah, shout out Pat. Um, and... He was working uh, at a place called Mediacom, and I was okay. selling cell phones at Wireless Wave. Okay. And I was making more money than him, a lot more money than him selling cell phones in the, in the mall, in the kiosk. Now, no, no disrespect to him. He's out of university. a starting job for him, right? Yeah, but, yeah. But he was way happier than me, mm -hmm. right? Like, I was stressed out, inventory, store getting broken into. Why am I working until 9 p.m. On a, uh, on a Saturday? I went to university, got a degree. Yeah. You know, I feel like I, I don't want to be stuck here because I see people stuck in those some of those retail roles for a long time. Yeah. And they never get out because it's hard to get out. It's actually very tough to get out because you're closing at nine. Your hours are irregular. Mm -hmm. It's hard to kind of find the time to find something new. And what, by the way, you have no experience. Right. Yeah. So so basically what happens is, uh, you know, he's he's loving life on top of the world, uh, which I'm very happy for him. I'm like, man, I maybe I need I need to get into advertising. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I talked to him. Oh, was that your car? Dude, I'm so sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> he parked you in with the cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So anyway, yeah. he's really happy. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm like, man, I, I want to be happy too. I'm like, yeah. And he's uh, and so he he moved on from from MediaCom with a place called Crucial Interactive, um, and he's he just raved about it, right? And then he was making better money now, and was okay. raving about it. I'm like. I'm like, just get me in there, man. Just, yeah. just, just get me in. I will work for free. I will, I will make sure my, my, my days off at this workplace or during the weekdays where I can contribute for free. I just mm -hmm. want a foot in the door, mm -hmm. right? And so he's like, yeah, man. We'll, we'll, we'll you know, I'll, 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 I'll see what I can do. I need to get a, kind of acclimated there first. And yeah. Um, and anyway, an opportunity came up with another company. Uh, and Patrick put me forward. Kind of, he kind of sold me like in advance because no. He's such a good friend. Yeah. Um, and so I got I got in. They they offered me the role, and I started working for minimum wage, which is better than free, which I was off. I was willing to do free. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just to get my foot in the door. Yeah. Minimum wage, cold calling. And that was a shock wow. to the system. Cold calling. And that was like, your that was your first time cold calling. Where you're eh? tracked. Where you're tracked on your on your calls, right? Yeah. And it was like 120, you know, 250 cold calls a day, B to B not quite really understanding what I'm selling, right? Like yeah. Google ads. And yeah, yeah. Uh, so I started off there and um, uh, a number of things uh, happened there that's maybe interesting for, for to talk about on another day. <laughs> okay, but no uh, I ended up uh, making my way to uh, another company in Toronto, a prominent uh, internet marketing company okay. where I met my business partners. Okay. And, um, and we learned a lot there. And then yeah. we kind of took our own learning on our own and started something new. Nice. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. It's it's cool to see that the things that you learned at, at an old job ended up becoming the backbone and cornerstone of your own business. Absolutely. You know, you learn a lot of things. 80% of the things are good, but then you also learn about the things that you don't want to do, mm -hmm. things that you don't want to be. Um, and But the real, really cool thing is having an opinion as an employee. Yeah thinking the company should do X, the boss should do Y, mm -hmm. and then being in the same position as that person later on, and now having to do those things and realizing they're a bit more difficult than you think. Yeah, it's that naivete almost. They're, right. they're, they're, you, you don't know what it's like until you're doing it. Like, yeah. I still have a pretty good idea. Like, it's not like, it's not rocket science, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, 
you always talk about reinvesting in your people. Mm-hmm. Well, reinvesting in your people should pay dividends long term for the business, yeah. right? But in the short term, you're hurting, yeah, because you're putting money money in there, yeah, and it takes some guts and and resolve to actually do that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So one thing that we did as a company um, in our second by our second year. We made sure everybody had benefits and we made sure they had good benefits. Yeah. That means now how much does that cost and how many like team members did you have at the time? Uh, maybe like, you know, 14 people or so. Yeah. I mean, this is a uh, guesstimate. Yeah. And maybe benefits would cost us like two grand a month per person. No, no. Oh, all together. Totally. Okay. Okay. Right. But a lot of companies don't offer benefits, which yeah. is crazy. Right. Yeah. Um, and we didn't do like bad benefits. We did good benefits. Good be- what I mean by that is, we covered 100 percent of dental, not 80 percent. We mm. went all the way, mm. right? We didn't do generic drugs. We did brand name drugs. Okay, right? We went all the way. So you because, got the designer benefits because we <laughs> expect our people to go all the way. Yeah, right. We're we're an agency that goes all the way for our clients, right? Mm-hmm. And so, not to be too preachy, but there's that saying, "How you do anything is how you do everything," right? So, yeah. if we're gonna be if we're, if we're gonna be premium, we gotta be premium. Yeah, right. If we gotta do it right, we do it right. And don't get me wrong, our shit stinks. Like we are. We make mistakes all the time, right? Mm-hmm. We have places where we need to tighten up here and there. And we're just mm-hmm. a collection of human beings with good days and bad days. Yeah. But um, for the most part, we try to make most of the right decisions most of the time. Yeah. And, and so far, it's worked. Mm. That's really cool, man. And I, I appreciate you sharing. Uh, so do you remember the first time you made 100 grand in a year? Personally? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I do remember that. Um, would have been like 2014 as a salesperson. Selling was this when you're selling cell phones? Selling, no, no, cell phones. I only get up to around 70, 75. Okay, cell phones. There okay. are other guys that were better than me, yeah, yeah, on the on the B2C front, and they were doing over 100. Okay, um, but yeah, it took me you know 2013, 2014 to, to get up to that that and, level, which is great, right? Like, yeah, like, I made 100k, right? Yeah. But then you realize, oh, well, actually, I'm, I'm here now, I need to get to I need to get to there, yeah, so up and up and up and up. What were you, was this the this was the selling. Over, this was the cold calling gig. Yeah, cold calling, selling, uh, you know, and then eventually, you, you know, you got inbound leads and stuff like that. So funny yeah. thing is that the first place where I was doing the cold calling, mm-hmm. I did enough to get good at it. Okay. But then on my team, I was the only one that was eligible to drive. Oh, like physically drive. Physically drive. Because <laughs> some okay. people were in trouble for various reasons. I, I, joined, I joined the place that was kind of interesting, yeah, uh, yeah. which is why I say get into it another time. Okay, okay. We'll um, save that for the other podcast. Save that for another time, yeah. And, and so... Um, I had like three guys booking me outbound meetings mm. every day. I had three meetings a day. And when you do three meetings a day in Toronto to business owners, dude, that's too much. You driving. learn a lot. Oh, really? Okay. You learn a lot, right? Because you're thinking about a certain lesson. What was the thing that you, that, that some of those things that you learned? Well, I learned about the different personality types, mm. right? Okay. Like not that I categorized them, but um, see, I was, I was always working B to C, right? I was yeah. always saying to somebody like, oh, it's, it's, it's your money. Um, and it was their money too, but it, it's different selling to a business and using business money for business things yeah. versus like, here's a cell phone case. Here's a charger, mm-hmm. very different things. Right. Okay. And, and some people were happy to see you and very gracious. Okay. Uh, or, or very interested. And because other people are booking my meetings, sometimes they sent me to situations where people didn't want to see me. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that you were here. And then like, so, so you're desperately trying to pitch to somebody. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, they're incentivized to book you the meeting. That's and you're right. like, okay, well I'm showing up. I, walk, I walked into some hostile environments, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but also walked into some very good environments. Yeah. So I, I also learned the city really well. I also okay. learned how to park very well. Okay. Uh, you know, cause yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're doing three meetings uh, in the city a day, you're three. driving around, hustling around, right? Yeah. A bunch of parallel parking all over the place. So, um, you know, and then, you know, when you talk to, to, to other business people, you yeah. learn so many things. Yeah. Uh, from them, right? Or, you know, one of the questions that come up, you understand their concerns better, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it was an, edu- it was a paid education. Yeah. And how did, how did that perspective start to shift? Like, because I know it's, it's cool, especially in something like video, right? Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm engaging with business owners all the time. Right. And the cool part about video is that it's, well, at least the videos that, that I do is um, around the business owner, usually instead of around like an employee. And I find like the mindsets are like completely different. The lens that they see the world is completely different. Um, and it's, it's different, especially when you're in an environment where your colleagues are questionable, right? They can't drive for certain reasons. Their perspectives are different on certain things. And then you go into this, this 
you go talk to the business owner, it's like night and day. Well, yeah, yeah they got to book a meeting, they got a quota, and it's like, yeah. just take a meeting with Mike. Yeah. And I get there. <laughs> and uh, again, it's, um, you know, sometimes you're, you're walking into different situations, but, yeah. you know, in addition to learning the different business people mm -hmm. and personality types, you learn about the different businesses. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah. and, and I still haven't come across every kind of business there is. So there's yeah. a business, you know, they said that there's an app for everything. There's a business for everything. Everything. So what were right? some of the ones that, that like shocked you to this day that you're like, that was a cool, that was a really cool thing. I, I find every business equal, like not equally cool, but like all with like, there's no business and I'm like, wow, that's way better than all the other businesses. Mm -hmm. um, Dude, every, every grass looks greener, but every grass has shit as well. You know what I mean? Or poop, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, every business has got its, its kinks, right? Yeah. So, um, there's some businesses that are more interesting because I know how to help them more. Mm, okay. Right. Like there's some businesses where I'm like, I can't really help you. Like you see that all the time when you watch like shark tra shark tank, shark tank. You see that all the time when you watch shark tank or dragon's den, uh, where the person, the investor is like, you know what? I actually don't think I could add value here. Right. Yeah. There's, there's some businesses where you're like, it's it's not for me. I can't promise you anything. Yeah, right? yeah. But there's certain businesses where you're like, you will win so much. Like yeah. you just need to do this. Uh, and it and those are the fun ones. Anyone that you can help is a fun one, right? Like mm -hmm. I actually don't pitch anything that I don't think will actually help, mm -hmm. right? And I I did that very early on. Like I I never ever ever sell anything to anyone that won't help them. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll often, if I can think of someone else that will help them, I'll say, go there, do that. Yeah. Cause it's, it's a long life in a small world, right? Like yeah. and your reputation means Matters, everything, dude. right? Yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. So what, what ended up happening after this first gig? Like this is, this was the one right before you started your business. No. So there was, I was, I was at the, the funny place. I'll say that I was at the funny place where yeah. I was, uh, you know, booking, uh, uh, getting in booking meetings and, and getting all those meetings booked for me. And then I went to uh, the more established uh, firm where I met my, all of my partners. Mm -hmm. uh, and then and then we started this. Wow. OK. And this this didn't just start as this. Right. This started as like two two kind of separate facing entities. Yeah. When, yeah. Talk, walk us through like the origin story through through your perspective. man. I'd love to hear. There's a lot of nuance, but I can kind of like you boil it down. Yeah, give us yeah. Level, so, yeah. um, we we're at the at the at the last agency. Yeah. And that last agency uh, had some clients that were looking into influencer marketing. Mm -hmm. So we got pitched by different influencer marketing companies, mm -hmm. and we thought, oh, well, this isn't very compelling. Or we're seeing a lot of places where you could actually make improvements on that pitch yeah. itself. Yeah. So it gave us the ability to mystery shop. Okay. And um, when we were shopping them, uh, we're like, well, that's a big opportunity here. Mm -hmm. So in addition to doing everything we know how to do, which is a traditional SEO, Google ads, Facebook ads, web development, um, et cetera, <laughs> like influencer marketing is that next big thing. Yeah. Right? It's a shiny object right now. It's a shiny object. It's also, it's, it's not only the shiny object, it's also that service that companies who have already figured out their digital now need to figure out. Mm. And that's your, that's your way in mm. through that door. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can't go through the SEO door. You can't go through the web development door. You can't go through the Google ads door. They've figured out those things, or at least they think they figured out those things. And yeah. They're okay for now, but now influencer marketing, they want to hear that out. Mm -hmm. They need to figure that out. Mm -hmm. It's a place where they're vulnerable because their competition is starting to do it and they're not. So, yeah. um, where was I going? Uh, you were just you were talking about the origin story and when you started. Seeing yeah, so influencer so we marketing. saw influencer marketing as an opportunity. Yeah, right. And so we thought, okay, we're gonna just specialize in influencer marketing. Mm -hmm. We're gonna throw up a site for that. We're gonna rank number one because that's the thing. Other influencer marketing companies, yeah, the few that were out there, didn't know how to rank. They yeah. didn't know how to how to do any SEO. They didn't know and, how to digital market. And you know that. So stuff, we know how to right? digital market, okay. and we know how to do influencer. Okay. So so we started to rank ourselves number one across all the major cities. And we started to get that inbound business, but mm. that didn't happen overnight. It takes time to rank, takes time to build that. Yeah. In the meantime, we need to eat, right? We have no investor, right? We we don't really know how to raise money because mm -hmm. we're not from that that world. We put a, a couple feelers and go through. So, but yeah. we had to do it anyway. So, yeah. um, we also launched a brand called Consultus Digital as well. Okay. Right, which is kind of more lead gen, performance marketing, whereas the influencer marketing is. Yeah 
or the influence agency is more uh, awareness, right? Okay. Social driven content. So now you have these two marketing special moves, like you, like you're saying with Street Fighter, down right square or whatever, right? That was your Hadouken. Yeah. Right. So, so influencer mar- SEO, PPC, Google ads, that's one Hadouken, right? And then you have the, the, uh, the six Hadouken, which is your influencer marketing, right? So you got these two moves that you know how to do over and over and over again. Yeah. Right. Now, how do you, how do you, what was the, 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 what was the basis of decisions when you're like, okay, I want to make this one brand towards this and this one brand towards this. Why did you guys end up doing that? So we didn't, when we, our plan, when we started was let's approach every agency with budget from, from their big brands. Okay. And let's do lunch and learns. Let's talk about influencer marketing. Let's talk to them about how we do influencer marketing and mm-hmm. why it's different. And if we do that, then they'll want to come to us to, to run programs. And I guess we just weren't connected enough. Maybe we didn't, pursue it hard enough for whatever reason it just didn't work the way that we thought we still got some deals but like it it wasn't most of the deals that we made were 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 through inbound but that's why we did the influence agency just purely looking at uh influencer marketing as a service so that those agencies would look would look at us as subject matter experts and that we specialize in that and go with us yeah consultants digital was everything else that we did Mm kind of like your traditional digital marketing agency so that way if someone wanted lead generation or you know seo google ads whatever you know we kind of pitched them on the you know here's what consultus does but if you're looking for influencer marketing well you came to the right place that's all we do here at the influence agency yeah yeah. right so So, were you were you going in with two badges on your shirt or were you saying we have this partner called consultus that no no we told them it's the same like we're actually very straight up as long as we got in the door we get to we tell people if they if yeah. they care to know. It's crazy because like once you once you're friends, you guys could talk about it openly, you know. But it's like, what do we? What 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 does our jersey say? Yeah. Like, so uh, luckily, we don't wear jerseys to meetings. We just yeah, we just yeah. wear shirts. And yeah. If someone came to us from like <laughs> theinfluenceagency.com, dude, I'm happy that you wear a shirt. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. If someone comes to yeah. comes to us from uh you know fills out a form or calls the influence uh, agency phone number. Yeah. And we have a chat with them. We're the influence agency. Mm-hmm. If someone comes in through Consultus and. We're coming there, kind of approaching them as like, we can contact the consultants digital. Let me show you these services that will most benefit your business, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but then, you know, after like, at the end of the day, we found that like people just didn't care. Like we went in, There's we no understood there. their needs. We proposed a solution. Mm-hmm. They were on board with it. And mm-hmm. whether we called ourselves consultants or the influence agency or anything else, it didn't matter. The relationship was there and yeah. they got the service and everything was fine. Yeah. Where it came, where, where it got a little bit uh, hairy was um, some employees would join on and we thought, okay, well, you're, you're going to be more performance marketing driven. So let's, let's get you on that side of the business in a certain role. Mm-hmm. So we're going to give you this as your primary email, mm-hmm. Consultants Digital. Mm-hmm. You are uh, more socially and awareness and influencer driven. So we're going to give you the influence agency. Yeah. But after a while, you know, Josh is sitting beside Kayla and Josh's email is consult us and Kayla's the influence agency, but we all have lunch together as a team. They all get paid from the same bank account, whatever. Yeah. And they're like, what are we? What yeah. are we? Right. Yeah. So uh, eventually we said, you know what? The, <laughs> the predominant brand between the two of these Siamese brands is yeah. the influence agency. Yeah. Right. It, it was also the more fun mm-hmm. uh, brand. Um, you know, the, the team loved the tone of it yeah. more, more so. Uh, it really, it's really what lived in our hearts. Okay. And so we still had this great brand called Consultus, mm-hmm. right? It was still a brand. It's, it was a website, mm-hmm. had a social media presence. It ranked. Yeah. Uh, it generated leads. And um, we didn't throw it away. We found good use for it. Cool. And and it's, it's funny because the way that you describe this internal feeling with the employees, it's almost like you're dating. And, and she's like, well, what are we? Like, <laughs> and, and we just need that you know, that definition, that common understanding, what do you, how did providing clarity to employees kind of help them along like with their performance? Like, I don't know. They just stopped asking us, which yeah. one are we? <laughs> we answered the question. We're like, we're this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was it. Right. And away we went. So how did, what, what was that splitting uh, kind of like for you? You know, like how did it was, well, I, you know what? It's a, it's a good question. I, um, I was like, okay, we've got this brand here. What are we going to do with it? Mm-hmm. It's still got value. Yeah. It still stands for something. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, at first we thought, do we just t- take it down? Mm-hmm. But we kind of left it there and we thought maybe this will be an educational arm of the business because what we did for 
maybe six months to a year leading into COVID is actually, we actually held free classes cool. at our office, teaching people SEO, teaching people Google ads, teaching people oh. that stuff, just because we figured that if we can be the providers of information, we can make a lot of friends. And actually someone that's been with us for almost five years was an attendee at one of those classes. Client, team member. Oh, sorry, team member. Okay. One of, so one of our team members here, she's a director okay. here now. But she came out to one of those classes that my uh, partner Tom was teaching. Okay. And she was looking for a job. She didn't have any Canadian experience. Hmm. She's getting like always to the final interview, but never getting a job. Yeah. We all met her. You know, we 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 saw that this person's like really driven, really bright. Mm -hmm. Um, hired her on, and she's done. She's phenomenal. Like, no, sorry, say those. But she's phenomenal. Uh, she, um, is a big part uh, of our success and. Uh, if we didn't host that free class yeah. under that consultant's brand, we would have never met her. Wow. Right. She would never met us. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you know, sometimes, you, you know, you do things because you're hoping people get to know you through this, this exercise, but it actually was a recruiting tool. Yeah. You know, that was a nice little lesson. Hmm. That's really cool. Were there any other like accidental things that this would have never been if it weren't for, Oh man. I don't have to jog my memory. Yeah. It'll probably come up when that, you know, when the actual idea hits. Yeah. I guess it's like some, sometimes there's critical lessons that you don't really recall until, um, they're actually relevant right this moment. And it's like, Oh my gosh, that thing 15 years ago, if that didn't happen, none of this would have happened. You know, well, it's like well, even this conversation, like if we didn't start the podcast, we wouldn't even be here. We wouldn't even be new friends, you know, well, like, if not for Steph, Tom uh, and Noah, like this, this wouldn't be here. We would not yeah. like, um, None of us would have built this on our own mm -hmm. as fast as we have anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Each one of us brings something special and, um, but you know, Tom, um, he became part of my team at the, at, at the, at the pr previous agency and he was interviewing with me and he was interviewing with someone else and that person acted in bad faith. Um, tried to jerk him around on his, on a salary. And, uh, for him, it was just like, well, <laughs> I don't want to work for a liar. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, if, if that guy didn't screw up, okay. Cause I think he was offering more than we were offering. Yeah. Tom would have went there instead of coming on Crazy. board here. Crazy. And then I would have never really had a chance to develop a relationship with him. Yeah. Right. So maybe that was one of the little things in the, you know, the, the course of uh, life that sent things down, you know, a great path. Wow. Shout out the person who was jerking Tom around. Yeah. <laughs> you Shout know? out to you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah. Well, hey, it looks like it worked out. Yeah. So you remember the first time you made a hundred grand in a month? Not personally. I've never made really a hundred thousand dollars in a month personally. Well, I mean, you did sell a company. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. I guess technically yeah. that would be it, right? And and that's such an interesting part about it, right? It's like, it, did it really happen in a month? Did it really happen in a day? Like, sure. You Like, how long did you build that thing for? You built it over a period of time. Yeah, right? how long did you negotiate or, or, or mull over the pricing of it? Right. But you know, How long did it take for the lawyers and the accountants to get involved to mm -hmm. figure out how it was all going to work? Yeah. How long did it take for that person to get financing? You know, like how, you yeah. know, there's this, there's so much that goes into goes it. into it. it doesn't really happen in a day yeah and or, it's interesting because it only takes a second to sign the paper yeah right? so like that actual transfer but it's like it's it's happening over the course of how long and the thing and that was just the sale part what about the building right like how long it took to actually build it right like that's that's pretty crazy now what about in terms of like for for the company do you guys remember your first hundred thousand dollar sale I really should remember our first $100,000 yeah. sale, but yeah. honestly, I don't. Yeah, that's cool. I, I remember our first sale. Okay, okay. Tell us the story, man. How was it? What was the client? So, not, not you don't necessarily have to disclose them, but like, how did it come to be? I'll tell you the client. I'll tell you the client. Okay. Um, so, one of our, our first clients was Yuck Yucks. Okay. Like the comedy club. The comedy club. Okay. And I remember they cut us one of our first checks. Okay. Remember, I told you we didn't have any investors. So, we needed that check yeah. to go on our bank account. <laughs> And we needed that, that check to clear, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that kind of check is like a general term, right? Yeah. So, so we, so we sent them the, the, the invoice okay. where we were with QuickBooks. Okay? okay. Um, and send them the invoice. They pay the invoice. Okay. Right. Perfect. Right. Awesome. Amazing. We're in business. Amazing. Five figures. Let's go. Your first sale was five figures. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What well, maybe that, maybe, maybe there was a, a little one before that, but like, yeah. this was like one of the first, the first, one, one of the first ones was like, okay. 
we can pay our rent, right? We got something. We got so, something here, yeah. Um, so we're waiting for it to come in. We're waiting for it to come in. Mm-hmm. It doesn't come in. And then so we call QuickBooks. We're like, what's going on, right? Yeah. They're like, well, yeah, we'll, uh, we want to see your, your bank account history. We're like, well, we don't really have much of a history. We're just, mm-hmm. we're just starting out. Yeah. We're like, okay, well, uh, send us the contract. We want to see. We want to see what you sold, because basically what they were getting at is they're trying to see if AML KYC we, we could withstand a chargeback, right? Because if I oh. let's say my first sale as a business is to you for fifty grand, yeah, and I don't deliver, you do a, a chargeback. They can't collect because I've taken the money split and it's a premature business. So now I they're on the hook. I kind of get it. Yeah, kind of get it, but they. But you know. Um, they managed to send us to the contracts. So we sent them the contracts, which I felt was like a violation. Yeah. Like, this is my business. This is how I sell. This is how I, yeah. I pitch. Like, what do you mean? What? Who are you? Contract. Who yeah. are you? You should have given me the warning yeah. that yeah. you might not accept it. So uh, we sent it to them mm-hmm. and we wait and we wait and wait. And they're like, oh, sorry, we don't approve you. So after sending them the bank statements, after sending them the no contract, way. after showing them the communication that we had with the client, no they're like, no, way. we're not going to pay you out. No way. So we're like, okay, well, can you refund the customer? Mm -hmm. And then, so they did. And we had to go back to the customer and we had to say, pay again. Sorry. Can you pay us by check this time? (laughs) It's just not going through with the payment processor. Yeah. So immediately we're just like, fuck QuickBooks. (laughs) And I mean that wholeheartedly. (laughs) Yeah. Like fuck QuickBooks. Do not like it. You know, QuickBooks. And if you were thinking about becoming a customer of the influence agency, I can ask for this to get cut down and maybe I'll reconsider it, but you guys fucked up. <laughs> and so what we did is we went to FreshBooks. Okay. Shout out FreshBooks. Shout out FreshBooks. Yeah, right. They're this... just on the street. Oh, no way. Okay. And I love FreshBooks all right, all right. because FreshBooks didn't treat us like that. Okay, we well, were able to transact. No problem. We'll send this to them. Maybe they'll come on the show. After. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, so, you know, um, and by the way, we're, we, we, are, we are QuickBooks customers right now. Yeah. Only because that's what our accountants want. Uh, we still have fresh books. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, so they're probably going to be like, what are we? So <laughs> <laughs> why are we your only one? Yeah. You know, QuickBooks, yeah. Is, well, QuickBooks is a more robust um, yeah. uh, accounting platform, but it, uh, the way that they treated us on the payment processing yeah. uh, standpoint was, uh, was not good. That's fine. Um, we also, we also set up for Stripe. Stripe okay. was also perfect. Yeah. So if yeah. you're starting a business. Yeah. And you're trying to get credit card payments in Mm -hmm. and you don't want a lot of fuss. Yeah. Don't go with QuickBooks. Start off with Stripe. Start off with with FreshBooks. Yeah. They're going to be your best bet. True. That's cool, man. So what ends up happening after that? Like, so you guys end up getting the Yuck Yucks client and then how do things unfold after that? Oh, you know, sale, little sale, little sale, little sale. Oh, medium sale, medium sale. Oh, big sale, big sale. Okay. Uh So, and the funny thing is, is that. You know, then that 50K deal would come in, right? Now, mm-hmm. like, oh, that'd be great. 50K, yeah. That's awesome, right? Yeah. A year later, 50K came in. It was like, cool. Nice one. Nice one. Yeah. Keep right? it up. Like, yeah, keep it up. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, back to work. It all adds up. Keep yeah. chipping away. Yeah. You know? yeah. So so it's it's funny. Uh, the things that, that used to Except make you want to go out and buy a, a bottle of champagne and mm-hmm. stand up like you own the world. And you're yeah. just, and you get it today. You're like, ah, oh, that's good. It, yeah. I mean, it yeah. is good. Like it is business that we want. Yeah. It doesn't have the same impact. Right. It's like, yeah, it's like being spoiled for choice. You know? Huh. It's an, it's an interesting perspective to see like the things that we always desire all of a sudden you get them and then it's like, okay, cool. Now what? You know, like, okay, back to work. Like, I guess we go at it all, all over again. Yeah, I remember you know? the first time I went to uh, a Leafs game, I was in my 20s. Mm. I didn't have the money to go to a Leafs game ever. Now, if I wanted, I could just go anytime I wanted to. Yeah, well, let's right? go. You know, so it's so it's just different effects, right? Yeah, yeah, it's that, it's that wow factor. Yeah. So so now your, your payroll is probably 100 grand a month. What? Way more. <laughs> oh, man, that would be a deal. Are you yeah, kidding me? Yeah, oh, yeah. Geez. Do you remember when it crossed that mark? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I remember. I remember when it when it crossed that, and I had to call in to authorize to be able to to go more, and mm-hmm. and then you know, then it was over two hundred, and had to wow. call in to authorize more, and wow, then it was over three hundred, had to call in to authorize more, and you're just Crazy. like, damn, these are like houses in Windsor every month. Get, come on, come on, <laughs> come on, just relax, okay? Why you gotta go there? <laughs> You don't want to go to Windsor, but that's okay, man. That's, that's cool. So if you were to go back and talk to the mic at Wireless Wave, you think he would believe it? You know, if you're like, dude, you're going to be doing this one day. You think, you think he would? 
Yeah. Yeah. I think if someone told me, I would believe it. Mm. But I, but I definitely didn't see it. Okay. Right. Like, um, growing up, growing up the way I grew up, mm-hmm. um, both my parents worked for other people, and that's what I thought I would do. Yeah. Right. Because, and, and actually, that's all I wanted to do. I all mm-hmm. I wanted to do was sell something that helped my clients. Mm-hmm move on with my life yeah i didn't want to be a business owner Mm -hmm. at all Mm -hmm. right because when you're a business owner guess what people think oh you're the boss no you're not the boss now you work for your clients and your and you work for your employees yeah you have way more bosses than you had before and you have all of the pressure of making sure that you run the business in such a way Mm -hmm. that a serves your client well but most of all making sure that your employees stay employed Mm -hmm. right so when COVID happened Okay, so we have a lot of hospitality clients. They've got to shut down their building. What do you do? Yeah. Right? So my partners and I, we took ourselves off of payroll because we didn't know what was going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. We've got to put them first, mm-hmm. right? We don't want to lose them, but also they're depending on us. Yeah. Right? So if I could make the same money without all of that pressure, all of that obligation, yeah, I would. But I couldn't sell uh, the solutions that I was selling and not have control over the operation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Once you see control of the operation, you, you see control of the, the outcome. And when you see control of the outcome, yeah. you put your reputation at risk. Because yeah. you gotta be able to walk your talk, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, being a business owner, everyone were kind of romanticizing it, is, is it. And it's definitely great, and you can create a great life and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But you, you gotta remember, like, you are serving everyone. Like, they might listen to you when you say, get that report out by tomorrow at 12, mm-hmm. right? Or, hey, would you mind working on this place? Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you need to build your business in such a way that they're able to sustain their life. And I will say that is very difficult in Toronto, mm-hmm. right? Because Toronto uh, has gotten really expensive in every way, shape and form, right? So, yeah. you know, if someone comes in, you know, in 20, you know, 18, you're going to pay the seller 60 grand a year. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good salary. Not Starting, Toronto. you know, you got a couple of years experience, Dude, 60 grand a year. You can't even wave your butt in Toronto with that. Now, that 60 is today's 80, 80. 85, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so that puts pressure on us. Now, I can't go to my clients and say, hey, you know, uh, last couple of years has uh, been pretty expensive. So we're just going to give you the same thing that we've always given you, but I need you to pay 25 or 50% more. Mm-hmm. They're not... I wouldn't have clients if I did that, right? Yeah, yeah. So you got to be really strategic about, you know, what you, what you bring in new and what you sell it at and, mm-hmm. you know, who you're bringing in. And on top of that, you know what else makes things really expensive? What's up? Okay. So we have a hybrid working model, okay. right? Because people like the flexibility of working from home. It's yeah. kind of like, it's the new way now, right? And I don't think we are, we're ever going to go 100% one way, 100% the other way, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But because of that, people are in the office less. When people are in the office less, training becomes tougher. Oh, right. Wow. So instead of hiring that bright person, you know, out of school, you know, uh, that showing shows a lot of promise, and you know that if you sit them beside this person with three years' experience, that they're going to learn the ropes in six months. They're going to be really useful. Mm-hmm. Now they're on a time delay. Mm. Now it takes a year to get them to where they used to go. Where before it only take you six months yeah. to get them. So now you're just like. Well, I can't wait a year. Mm-hmm. I can't wait a year for someone to become really useful. Mm-hmm. So now I, I necessarily have to hire people that already have three or four years experience. Wow. Right. So instead of, you know, which is, you know, it, it has its benefits because, again, you don't have to train them. They're coming at a higher level. They're servicing your clients right away. But, you know, variety, variety is the spice of life. Like you need you need people kind of starting off and then you kind of like your need your intermediate experience yeah. and you need your people that are that are masters. Right. Like you need a mix of all those people, but you have kind of eliminated a certain tier because training and upskilling is, is, is so hard. And even if you said, you know what, let's bring in the newbies mm-hmm. and they got to be in the office every day. Well, mm-hmm. who's going to train them? Yeah. Right. Cause the people that have earned their stripes are, they, want the like, flexibility, I home, man. I right. Home. They want to, yeah. they want to start, start their week Monday at home or end their week Friday at home. Yeah. And they want to pile through all the ta- tasks without distraction. Mm-hmm. And maybe they want to do a load of laundry in between, but who cares? Because, they're answering that email at 6.30 p.m. So I don't care yeah. if they got a doctor's appointment in the middle of the day. In fact, I want them to live that kind of life. I want them to have that kind of flexibility. Yeah. Because if you don't, if you're not an, a, a great employer, you're going to lose great people. Yeah. You can be a mediocre employer, but then you only get mediocre people, mm-hmm. which gets mediocre results, mediocre clients, mediocre growth. Yeah. So How you do anything is how you do everything, right? That's right. If you want to be you premium. Know, you got to invest. you got to invest in people, right? So, yeah. But it's, it's tougher in Toronto because... 
like my goal, like what actually gets me excited isn't the hundred thousand dollar deal mm-hmm. or the five hundred thousand dollar deal. Although I'll, I'll take it and I love it. You yeah. know, I'm not. Yeah. If you're listening to this and you've got a big budget to spend, <laughs> uh, by all means, big please, money, big money share, please fill out a mean? form. But, <laughs> the, but, www.dinfluenceagency.com. You know, the most yeah. exciting thing, and this is not to sound like like a, like a you know a super good person, but what's okay. the most exciting to me is when uh, people buy their first homes here. Mm from working here okay that is the shit yeah that is awesome and that's and actually i told you about benefits right so that's yeah. what we did in the second year in our fourth year we did uh rsp matching and the okay. whole goal behind the rsp matching was so that you could start to save in your rsp mm-hmm. we'd match a certain amount and you could start to build that nest egg so that now you've got your first time home buyers yeah right yeah and now you can get in the game yeah right so that was the that was the goal there now why did that matter so much to you or why does it matter? It still matters. You know what I mean? It's probably mattering more and more as time progresses. But what 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 does that actually mean to you? You know, it's the same reason why I would like I'd help somebody with their bags if I saw they couldn't carry them. Yeah. Like, I just want people to get ahead. Mm-hmm. I want them to achieve. I want to help them if I can help them. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know they got to help themselves. Like that person that bought that condo mm-hmm. uh, or that bought that house, I didn't do it for them. They did it for them. Yeah. But I'm glad that this could be an environment where they were able to make it happen for them. Yeah. Right. Um, Cause if, if you're not, if you're not succeeding, you're not happy. Fair. That's cool, man. So if you were to do it all over again and you're like, Mike, you got to make a hundred grand in a month. What would you, uh, what would you do? Would you go right back to influence agency? Would you go right back to marketing? Would you, uh, you know, what is, I kind of wish I had a few different lives so I could try different things. Okay. Right. Cause okay. you don't know how those other things would work. Yeah. Yeah. This has worked. Mm. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's only going to get better. Yeah. Right. Um, but uh, I wish someone would have given me the following advice. Okay. Right. So I was I was a great sales rep. Mm-hmm. Right. Selling phones in a mall, as good as you can be at selling a phone in a Dude, mall. Dude, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but every month you start off at zero. Mm-hmm. Right. Every month you've got to start selling again. Yeah. Right. To start making money, and you know sometimes you know you have a bad week. Sometimes you have a bad month. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the mall's dead. Right. Sometimes. The economy is bad, whatever, right? There's, yeah. there's all these- Sometimes uh, COVID comes and closes the mall. There's, there's a lot of things, right? And, mm-hmm. um, you know, and you saw that person once and maybe they come back to you, but like who the hell cares about their, going back to the same cell phone guy if they're even still there, right? So, yeah. so uh, I wish someone would have said, get into a role where you are selling something mm-hmm. that pays a lot of money that is recurring, mm. right? So, um, you know, if you're doing, you know, digital marketing and you got a business signed on for marketing, they're paying you every single month. Yeah. And you bring on another client and that, that snowballs, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's ongoing, right? So you've only made maybe 10 sales yeah. in the whole year, 10 clients, but now you have 120 invoices mm-hmm. going out mm-hmm. every year from mm-hmm. 10 sales. And then you do another 10, Sales the next year. Now you have 240 invoices the next year. Yeah. So uh, it's yeah. Everyone understands the idea of a snowball. So digital marketing has been great for that. But another place where you make a lot of money is in commercial insurance. Every business needs insurance. Yeah. Sell commercial insurance. Build a book. Build relationships. Service people well. Help them. Get them the best rates. Get them the best coverage. Take an interest in their business. And guess what? You don't have to do that. You know, you know, you don't have to do that a hundred times a month, mm-hmm. right? And what you're doing is, is you're setting yourself up to make more money every year you're alive and working, hmm. unless you have a big loss, right? Um, but that that's an industry that I would I would have said to myself, go try that out. Yeah, yeah. Right? Go sell, go sell. You know, a million dollars in premium a year. Yeah. And every year make one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars in commission. On top, on top, on top, on top, on yeah. top. And it keeps adding, it keeps right? adding, it keeps adding. And it's fun. Selling is fucking, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> because all you're doing is you're solving problems. Mm-hmm. If you're selling the right thing. If you're out there and you think you're going to sell something that isn't going to work. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, you're terrible. Yeah. Or in a really bad situation where you got to, you got to do this to feed your family. And okay, I guess, so, you know, it's like stealing a loaf of bread. It's like, mm-hmm. it's not immoral if you got to say, you know, if you got to feed your family with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, you get a pass on that. But, mm-hmm. um, but all you gotta do is just sell something that you believe in mm-hmm. that can help people mm-hmm. and then keep doing it. Keep helping people keep yeah. selling it. Cause yeah. they're going to buy their commercial insurance. They're going to get their mortgage. 
They're going to get their internet marketing mm-hmm. from somebody. Mm-hmm. It may as well be you who, who cares to give them the best option. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, insurance uh, sales, specifically commercial, because you know you can sell a bunch of $2,000 auto policies or you can sell you know, uh, $500,000 building insurance policy. Like, you know, you're, you're better off floating in those circles, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but not to say, but that's, all work is good work, right? All, all yeah. sales are good sales, but th- that's personally what I would do is I would go into, you know, tr- sell things to rich people or sell, <laughs> sell things to people of means, right? Yeah. Like, I don't want to sell, a, uh, you know, a $2 item a thousand times. I want to sell, sell a thousand dollar item two times, yeah. that, you know, and have it recur. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, I know that you, you did mortgage brokering for a minute, but you know, <laughs> three minutes yeah. for three minutes, but <laughs> I, I, I see, I see a lot of success, uh, or I see people that are successful doing that. And yeah. you know, my mortgage broker, mm-hmm. uh, who's at, uh, at safe bridge, he works alongside, uh, Chris and Arlene. Oh yeah. I'm never going to go anywhere else. Yeah. Shout out, shout out the, uh, safe, safe bridge, bridge private yes. team. Yeah. I'm never going to go. I'm never going to go anywhere else. And anytime I need something, it's going to be Fred, 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 yeah. Fred, right? Shout out Fred Babby. So, all right. And, but how many times can he cash in yeah. on my business every single time? Purely because when I talk to him, I, I can hear his smile through the phone. Mm-hmm. It's warm. It's friendly. He's knowledgeable. Yeah. He gets back to me when he says he's going to get back to me. And guess what I do? I refer other people to him. And it's going to be the exact same thing. Yeah. Right. So, you know, on a more, what's the average mortgage at in Toronto, right? Call it 700,000. I don't know what the numbers are. You're making a point off that. You're making $7,000, $8,000 every time you transact with somebody. Boom. And guess what? Five years later, if you're they're on a five year fix or a three year fix, you're doing it again. Yeah. You're just doing it again. So you need to get yourself in a, in a position where whatever you're selling is again and again and again and again and again. Yeah. That would be my knack. That's where I would, uh, that's what towards. suits me, right? Yeah. Other people have other, there's, like you said, there's a hundred ways to make a hundred K. Yes, sir. But, but that's the way that I would go about it. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the, that's what seems like the most fun to me. Yeah. Now what is it, and, and do you think that would be along the lines of what you would tell the, the um, the mic that's still working at wireless? Wave? Oh yeah. I'd be like, Oh buddy, you don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's possible. Mm-hmm. Like I was just like, what do I do? I, I was, I was looking up jobs. Like what can I get into the government? I've got a poli sci degree. I guess this is what I should try doing. <laughs> Right. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll go be an insurance underwriter because yeah. my mom works in insurance. Yeah. Okay. Underwriter sounds kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Right. So the ghostwriter, I'll try that. And then, <laughs> and then I was, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll go work for, uh, for CSIS, you know, intelligence agency. Yeah. yeah. Right. That'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they don't make very much. <laughs> At least starting on their website. I was like, what? Yeah. 60 grand for the first five years. I make more than that selling cell phones. Dude, it's crazy. You know, so crazy. Um, so yeah, so I wish I would have, I, I wish I would have went to myself and said, Hey, look, you know how to sell. Yeah. You like people. And that's, the, that's the important thing in sales, right? Like if you say, I don't like people don't sell, yeah. don't sell <laughs> because some people will buy from you anyway. But normally like, I, I believe like there's, uh, there's, there's something in the human spirit where like it resonates. Like if I like you mm. genuinely, mm. you will feel that to some extent. Yeah. It's kind of like the truth. Okay. When you say the truth, the truth should resonate. Yeah. Right. So if, uh, but if I don't like you and I'm just being fake to you, mm-hmm. you might buy it. I might get you to buy it. Right. But but more often than not, not your, your trust level is not going to be hundred percent. It's going to be like 75%. Yeah. Right. It's, it's not going to work. And you're, you're swimming against the current. If you don't like people, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Don't be in sales. Mm-hmm. But if you like people, uh, and you're social yeah. and you want to help people and you want to only sell things that can actually help them do that. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm actually a bad sales guy in some sense and a good, depending on how you look at it is when I used to sell cell phones, I'd be like, look, this case is 35 bucks. The guy literally 20 feet that way at a booth is selling the same thing for, for 20. Yeah. Let's go buy it from him. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go buy it from him. Save yourself 15 bucks. Mm-hmm. Right. Go to, go to Pacific mall, save yourself <laughs> like 50% of the price. Just go yeah. to P mall, yeah. go to P mall, buy it there. Um, cause I cared about them. I looked at them like myself and actually that's the cardinal sin. Mm. I think, uh, that, uh, that I made and in sales, I okay. assumed that everyone that I was selling to was in the same financial position and had the same yeah. values that I had. Yeah. See, I said to somebody go to P mall to go buy, buy that car charger. Cause you're going to save yourself 30 bucks. 
But you know Dude, what? The Michael yeah. today says, yeah. I'll just pay for it right here. Because you know what? I don't want to spend 40, an hour driving to Pima. Dude, you're going to spend an hour in the parking, parking lot. Dude. <laughs> getting lost in there because yeah. all the stores are glass. And I don't know yeah. where, where I'm at. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'd rather just pay you for it. And if I had a problem with it, I come back to you. I know I can yeah. exchange it. Right? That, yeah. You know, but, but I assumed everybody was like me trying to save a buck because I'm a Scarborough boy. Yeah. And I, I kind of like dismiss things that they that they should get right yeah, away. Yeah, the time right? your time was less valuable than your money was too. So it was fine. It was, like, it was good to be honest, you know. Like, and and honestly, always gains you trust. And you, yeah, when you're truthful with somebody, it, it works. It yeah. really works. Yeah, and you shouldn't do it because it works. You should just do it because it's good to do. Yeah. Um, but, um, but sometimes uh, you make the mistake of thinking that person values things the same way that you do. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And oftentimes, like you end up saying no for your customer, like on their behalf. On their behalf. Why would you do that? But, yeah. but you know, that's why you have to like take a little bit more time, suss things out. I remember there's this guy named uh, Kofi. Shout out Kofi. Shout out Kofi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he, had, he had a web development company. I remember him saying, we charged that customer $100,000 for branding in their Shopify site. I was floored. Uh-huh. I was like, how could you charge a hundred grand for that? Yeah. That's insanity to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You took that guy for a, a ride, ride uh-huh. right? And he was stupid enough <laughs> to go on that ride with you. And then at the end of it all, they dumped the whole thing because they didn't scope it out properly from the beginning. But what I learned, mm. and, and, I, and by the way, I don't think he took him for a ride now. Yeah. Right? Because branding costs money. Yeah. Expertise costs money. Yep. Right? Building, building out a site properly. And all the time spent in the back and forth and the yeah. da da and all this stuff. Yeah. That takes time. But uh, but I remember thinking that because I was selling websites mm-hmm. for like 10 grand, mm-hmm. right? And he was saying to me. Even even some people might be like, 10 grand? Oh, you yeah, sold a website for 10 grand? Yeah. Can I just make that for free on uh, GoDaddy? Yeah. You know, right? Yeah. And and so um, I remember him saying, one day I just changed my prices. I did nothing different. I just changed my prices. We were like, yep. I'm like, shit. Uh-huh. All this time, right? Uh-huh. So... Um, you know, again, just because you think that it's not worth something doesn't mean that someone else doesn't think it's worth something. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. That's but you should always be honest, right? Mm-hmm. Always mm-hmm. be honest. Yeah. That's cool, man. So what do you, what do you think the books that make Mike Mike are? The books? Yeah. Give us, give us a handful, you know? So, uh, I, cause I'm, I was, I was ideating around like the book. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn this into a book. Cause I, honestly, I think a lot of kids need it. Like I was the, the original reason why I started the show was uh, my little brother wanted to quit his job at McDonald's to sell drugs. Remember I was telling you? Yeah. 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 And, and you know, I challenged him and it's like, okay, well, how much money do you think you're going to make? Right. And now I, I just moved back to my mom's house just temporarily, you know, I'm looking for, I'm looking for a new place right now. And I end up going to the gym last night and I'm sitting in the sauna next to a kid who's 20 years old. Kids telling me, oh, yeah, I'm scamming. I'm trying to sell drugs. I'm like, dude, what are you doing, bro? Just go listen to the show, right? Like, stop. Go on your Snapchat right now that you're using scam stuff and look at the discovery page and look at the show because this is, you're the same exact person that I made this for. And like, it's it's devastating seeing that, that people just keep diving towards mm-hmm. this. And I'm not going to say it's, it's school's fault, but obviously it's because he doesn't see a better route. So it's like there's it starts with information and there's books that led you to believe what you believe. There's, you know, maybe it's a a course, maybe it's a lecture, maybe it's a piece of media that you came across. You know, Um, I'm curious. I want to I want to put a small list under under like in different sections Um, and, you know, maybe some books or or lessons or things that you listen to that might have changed your perspective, you know. Honestly, um Okay, so one of my favorite books is um, uh, Jeffrey Gittimer's, I don't know if it's 12 or 13 Rules for Selling, but that was a really easy read, but it's, it's, uh, it's called The Little, Little Red Book of Selling. That mm-hmm. was uh, phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, you know, we can, there's books that I've read that I, I don't remember the title of. Um, I wish I, I wish I had this question ahead of time. I could have shared, but I'm sorry. I didn't, you know, I'm going to include it in the, in the show yeah, yeah. countdown automation. I'll, I'll give you a few, but, um, there's, you know, how to win friends and influence others, yeah. you know, art of war, you know, that's, Sounds you know, a, it's, Dale Carnegie. it's, it's yep. essential, but like, I kind of already knew all of this stuff. Yeah. I, you know, like, like, it. like the intrinsic stuff, because my dad was very, very instrumental okay. in my upbringing when it came down to, uh, sales and interactivity. So okay. I, I think that's, um, I mean, I can share that with you and you can include this if you want, but, um, so 
my my aha moment uh, was was uh, I went to um, I went to the airport with my parents. Okay. To um, uh, pick up my grandmother, and we're kind of waiting around. I'm kind of bored. Hmm. So I go up to a cart that's sitting there. I put it in the cart return. A dollar pops out of it. I'm like, Fuck a dollar. My allowance is two dollars a week. I just made fifty percent. So what did Rich I guy. do? I'm immediately looking for more carts, right? So yeah. I'm just piling in the carts, piling in the carts, piling in the carts. I end up getting a twenty-two dollars, twenty-two dollars uh-huh. in like fifteen minutes. Um, and I remember like the ride home, and I'm thinking. My mom will never let me come to the airport by myself. How do I, how do I make this money again? <laughs> right? Off and of 22 bucks. A rich guy. 20, I felt rich. Yeah. I, you remember what, what, 22, most, dude, what 22 loonies would feel? Dude, in that's, your a, hand? that's 11 weeks, bro. Yeah. Like, think about it. Making yeah. two bucks a week, that's 11 weeks right there. And um, the richest guy on the planet right now. But, sure. you know, my mom would let me go to No Frills. Mm, and their cards took 25 cents. cents. Yeah. Yeah. And so I used to do that. And that VP and I went to no frills, eh? I did that at <laughs> um, uh, Tap Scott and Nielsen. Okay, okay. Yeah, so um, in Malvern Mall. Mm-hmm. And I was making like six, seven dollars an hour pushing carts back, which yeah. as a like 10 year old is pretty good. Dude, you're the richest 10 year old on the on the. I was, I right was. Now. Yeah. And, but, but this is where, so. I remember I was having a bad time. No one would give me their cart. So my dad comes by. He's like, what's wrong? I'm like, no one's giving me their cart. He's like, it's because of your fucking attitude. Same huh. this to like a 10 year old kid, right? Yeah. But like, he's right. He's giving me, he's giving me the advice. And he's yeah. like, he's like, you're mopey. Hmm. You're approaching people like they're not going to give you their cart. And guess what? You're right. Wow. Right. Fix your attitude. Go up there. Fake it. Right. Put a smile on your face. Give them a little bit more energy, huh. right? And I did that, and started to come, started to come, started no to way. come, right? So your attitude and how you approach things—that was that was the first lesson, right? Yeah. Another thing that taught me a lot, believe it or not, was we had to sell these um, raffle tickets for okay. for our, our softball league. Okay. And every day I'd come home. If I finished my homework, my dad said, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Nothing." He's like, "Go out and sell those tickets." Huh. So I used to go door to door to door to door selling raffle tickets. Yeah. And then I'd go into old folks condominiums and try to sell them the raffle tickets. Cash out. But then they would t- then they would say, "Come have a coffee with me because they're lonely." <laughs> and then I I sit down with them and yeah. they make me they make me something or yeah. they give me a cookie. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, imagine that today going to strangers' hell. Dude, I was <laughs> I was, I was like, it was so crazy. I was at this client's house. We were shooting, right? And they're like, and they're like, no, it's a, someone came door to door to sell them something. And they're like, no, it's a scam. And I'm like what like how do you how do you how do you expect them to to sell it right and and she was adamant that it was a scam and then they took their mom group and they said it was a scam after and i was like that's that's insane like what do you mean like you're gonna discourage the kid from going door to door like just like that like i remember if it wasn't for going door to door i don't think i would have been doing what i was today right i used to sell the most chocolates bro you crazy and and then it was it was what was even more nuts about it i didn't end up telling them this but that was the same week that my brother called me and told me he sold a thousand dollars in one day of window cleaning by going door to door and I'm yeah like, that's exactly what i'm talking about yeah you know i mean mark cuban talks about that so that's that mark cuban's book was really good okay uh i forgot, I forgot what it's called it's all right search up mark cuban's book you'll find it you know that was one i read and you know he, he would sell garbage bags door to door yeah Right. Uh, yeah, he had really like cool stories about how he came up. Yeah. Um, and so my biggest education was just people, mm. people, people, people. Like yeah. it was just, it was just collision, 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 collision. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in a place like Malvern. Yeah. Where you got like, you see the full spectrum. You man. see the full spectrum. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and you get to learn people cool. and then I got to learn regular people. That's what made me a good sales pe- person. Uh-huh. And then of course, I got to learn business people from all the freaking calls I went into. And, yeah. you know, I had some people treat me really rudely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really rudely, right? But, That's like, cool. you know, but I, I sit in the car and think, oh, how, could I, how could I have handled that differently, right? Because yeah. yeah. you get flustered. Of course. You know Dude, what and, and it's you like you're wearing up, And it's right? like you're wearing it now. And like, like, I don't it's, have the it's perfect answer mind. for everything. Yeah, you can't. Right? But, dude, man, people first, right? People first. So, so people and then, you know, books will help you kind of. Will inspire you, give you different systems, uh, yeah. teach you different things. Uh, one, I forget the book, but but I took one thing away from that. Yeah. And that is, 
in a social situation, when you, the person that you care most about comes in the room, mm. drop everyone that you're talking to. Really? And she calls it a baby pivot. You baby pivot towards them and you give them the attention of a three, that you would give a three-year-old. Wow. Right? Because when a three-year-old enters the room, it's all about them. Uh -huh. You are there in your, your, your frame of reference and no one around them matters mm. except for that three-year-old. Huh. Right? Treat people that matter in your life that way or in business that way. Mm -hmm. When they come in, just don't, don't just shake their hand and look aside. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge that they're there. Yeah. Like, give them you. How do you put the people gently down that you're talking to? And it, like, so you're mid conversation, that person walks in, right? How do you like just like leave that conversation and then go to I another? don't know. I, I think, yeah. I think everyone's got to figure that yeah. out for themselves, <laughs> right? I mean, just say, yeah. oh my. I got to say hi. Give me one second. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, just do that, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Act with, you know, if you have a little bit of enthusiasm and hopefully it's genuine. Yeah. Right? Like. That's funny. Because I get sideswiped all the time, especially when I'm at these events. And then it's like one person, one person, one person. You know, so I was curious. It's, yeah. But, you know, it's not, cool. you can't always do it. But yeah. like, I remember that, that, that was a lesson I took from the book. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Or what I said to you earlier before the cameras were rolling, was, which is everyone's favorite topic is themselves. Yep. Right? And, now, and then, you know, you read it and then you relate it back to your, your actual experience like yeah. oh that makes a lot of sense yeah you know? yeah it's funny like you you spend a whole hour long conversation you ask like three questions and they'll be going on a tangent and then at the end they're like i you know we had a really great conversation and it's like <laughs> i did not say one thing yeah, <laughs> i'm sitting here thinking should i ask you a bunch of questions yeah. but, I, but, but you know the dynamic here is uh yeah, you yeah. know you, you lead you lead dude that's cool you could ask anything you want man i'm an open book but i am i'm curious about another thing though what's a day in the life of a big mike these days you know, that's another section that I want to include in the book is like, what's a day in the life of this type of person and this type of person and this type of person, you know, and I know it changes. And like you said earlier, some days you're taking on the trash, some days you're cleaning the washroom, some days you're doing, you know, this and third. The Probably big, today the, you're going to get slapped thing, up in Mario Kart. That's the the, <laughs> big, the big, biggest thing is, uh, is prioritization. Mm, okay. Right. Like you could be doing everything. Yeah. There's no end to the amount of tasks you ha you could be doing. You're yeah. never done, mm. but you need to figure out that day what what will bother me if i don't get this done today mm -hmm. you know what what what's a mission critical mm -hmm. thing and, and you need to attack those things mm. um and, and and personally not enough people do this that i think should do it is every day you got to start off with a to-do list mm. it's a to-do list and you just and you, you write it out and you cross it off as you do it yeah and you just feel like okay i've done something like like you can have a busy day and i could say what'd yeah. you do today and you're like oh, i don't know like a lot of stuff yeah right but just do that and you'll feel better about what yeah. you did that day and the yeah. effort that you put in. And I learned, I learned that from, uh, again, a guy, in the, a guy named Josh Singer. Shout out Josh. Uh, Josh Singer. Shout out you. Runs cognitive marketing. His story is really amazing. Uh, I learned a lot of good habits from him. I lived with him for, um, oh, no for about, uh, for a few months in Saskatchewan of all places. Oh, I'm so for, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I'm Dude, what sorry are you doing too. out there? Uh, building out the Canadian Tire Financial Services uh, program, okay. yeah, wow. uh, with, with him and and a few other people. Another guy that lived in that house with us uh, has a company in Silicon Valley worth 1.5 billion. It was a kind of cool that's experience. That's cool. That, that's cool. Yeah, I went to for the world. And yeah, like everyone, everyone that that's in that house, I'm probably the least successful of. Yeah, uh, and is doing you know crazy things, right? Yeah, but, um, it's like Jay Z, Pharrell, and Kanye walk into a studio in like the 90s. You know, it's like wow. Different. These guys had me planning. Yeah my month in advance they like wow. sit down and write out what you're doing for the month for the month, not, not for the day yeah. for the month to like what degree of detail like i don't know what i'd be doing by the hour for the month for the month that was the first task oh but it was cool it gets you thinking it gets yeah you thinking about how what how, a challenge how are you gonna how are you gonna do it yeah do you still do you still carry that practice no, to this day no, no. hell no yeah. i don't know what's coming to me next to uh, tomorrow right yeah, so i just yeah. do no i just do it a priority it's a yeah and maybe it was a less complex role, right? So, mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, that was that was a good lesson. And these guys also showed me work. Okay. Right. Uh, like Christmas Day, these guys. I was there. I was there. We were all there on, on Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know, and guy is, you know, he's he worked for like thirteen hours straight. Like this guy didn't dawdle. Mm -hmm. Like when you saw him working, it wasn't like watching YouTube on the side while working. Just it locked was, in. Boop, 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 boop. It was like it was. I mean, he was a machine. Yeah. It was a machine. I was like, oh, that's, work. that's the level, that's the level of, of work you got to yeah. put in, right? Yeah. Like yeah. a lot of people, they want their work-life balance. No, no. 
is work life integration. You want to get you, you want to go, you got to get integrated. You yeah. got to you got to look at work as your life. Yeah. All right. 100%. There's no like, oh, you know, you're not going to accomplish anything in eight hours a day. No. Like you got to go hard. Yeah. And then you go hard enough so that you hopefully like later on, you don't have to do that eight hours. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Unless you're an absolute like monster. And or unless it's just integrated in a way that you just enjoy it. You yeah. know, like that's like this, like some people would be like, oh, my gosh, you're going to an interview. And like at this time, it's like, dude, I love this stuff. You know, like this is this is integrated in and in, into my life the perfect way. And yeah. So what what is what it was like on the priority list for today, for example, you know. So today I had a big pitch. Okay. So got my fingers crossed for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Big pitch. Um, not so much for the money, but just to make sure that the, that the client was like on board with the I, I, idea and that we could okay. kind of bring things uh, to where they want to take things in 2024. Yeah. Um, and then I had a, a shoot and I didn't have to do too much of the shoot, but there are certain key moments where I wanted things um, expressed a certain way that I okay. felt would translate. So, so you weren't you were doing a little modeling, were you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if anyone's hiring me for modeling, <laughs> question how long you'll have your job. <laughs> yeah, um, tell your agent to contact me. I got some work. Yeah, for you. yeah. You got a bright future, young man. You're looking for big and tall. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you're looking for the average man. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So, I think uh, yeah. So we went to a shoot. Uh, you know that that was a priority today. Okay. Uh, and then we had something become a priority just now that wasn't a priority, and that was client broke their site their own site so oh, i'm like no okay way. well that's important you yeah. know whether it's their fault or it doesn't matter it needs to get fixed right, right now yeah. right so i uh, like but that's what's good about having such a great team is that mm -hmm. we, we can kind of always support people yeah. um and never leave them hanging and but it used to be me it used to be me like staying up late 13 hours doing that yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. right so yeah cool yeah that was uh that was a day and then just uh just a ton of uh Today was a ton of catch up, just just a ton of catch up. Because what we're trying to do is is actually there's a another podcast I could tell you what what it is later on. I won't say it here. What's that? Um, I don't remember the name, so I'm not saying it here. But <laughs> <laughs> but but it it um, it just talks about like re replacing your own hours with hours that are cheaper than what your hours would cost, right? So yeah. like right now I'm trying to get a controller in. Okay. My God, I'm looking for a financial controller because I do all the finances here. Yeah. And I've got not, I don't have a background in finance. Yeah. I'm a political science major. <laughs> I'm really good at math. Yeah. But, you're really good at people too, right? Oh, yeah. Well, Thank just, you. Yeah, no problem. Um, but I need to figure that out and then I'll, I'll have a little bit less. But then you always find a way to make yourself busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. Well, we appreciate you adding us to the priority list today. And uh, it's been an honor. This is just fun. You like this? This is fun stuff, right? Cool. I mean, I get to th I, I get to, uh, to answer questions, talk to you, meet yeah, you, and yeah. who knows where you'll go. I think I think I think you guys are gonna do excellent things. Yeah. Right? What 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 makes you think that? Um, I think the the quality of your production is really high. Okay. Um, and I think that um, I think you're a great personality. Appreciate it. I think you've got like you know some some people have the have the drive, but then they don't got the stuff. Some people have the stuff and they don't have to drive. Mm. I think you guys have got it. Cool. Well, and I think I think eventually um, whatever videos you put out today are going to be uh, one of those views videos that don't get a lot of views, uh, you know, from 10 years ago. But you'll keep graduating into new people, new people, new people, new people. Yeah. And it's it's just it's going to, well, you know, you're already doing good, but it's uh, I think your best days are so far ahead of you. Cool. Well, I'm I'm yeah. excited, man, and you got a front row seat now. So let's see let's see what the next chapter. Yeah, I can say I was on that show too. <laughs> yeah, can you believe it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> no, I, I think they hid my video. <laughs> ah, get out of here! Get out of here! That's yeah, funny, dude. Happens. I'll put you on the front page, man. It was a, it was an absolute honor. So we appreciate you welcoming us to the space. Where can we find you before we rock out of here? And not Big Mike, but like Influence Agency. Theinfluenceagency.com you know? or Google Influencer Marketing Toronto or Influencer Marketing New York or Influ Influencer Marketing Los Angeles. You know All why? Because right. we're the only agency that markets ourselves this well. Beauty. Well, there you go. There you have it. You heard it here first. That's how Big Mike made his first 100K. And we will see you on the next episode. Peace. Yo, so if you want to see the extended version, you guys are going to have to check out the YouTube channel with the behind the scenes for the bonus where Big Mike's about to get folded in Mario Kart. I want to show you what it looks like. So we had this angle right here. 
kind of on, on big mic. It was super zoomed in, so it really looked dope with this light kind of in the back and this here. Then we had this angle that kind of got him on a full body. I ended up sitting over here. I know it got a little dark behind me. We probably could have added another light in like behind, but the sun was out originally. But Mike, Mike now is talking all this shit. So we're about to start this extended version where he's gonna get slapped up in Mario Kart. I should actually, I should probably make a bet with him. This dude, he's gonna see this after. He is about to get crushed. Good luck, sir. Good luck to you. Yeah, good luck. Ooh, I'm nervous right now. Are you nervous? Well, we're gonna see what happens. It's gonna be fun. This is it. What place are you in right now, Mike? <laughs> okay, my hand slipped. That's why I didn't have the banana oh, to block your shot. Okay, the okay, shot. okay. That's what that was. You're nice. Are eh? you getting these purple drifts right now? You're looking, you're looking like you're pretty close right now, Mike. Oh no! No! <laughs> oh! Oh, that was a photo finish! Oh. <laughs> that was good, that was oh, good. Shit, that was right man. there. Oh, that was a close one. Oh, wow. Getting fucked up. Are you kidding me? Oh, no. I think that was me that hit you with the banana. Is that what just happened? I landed on it. Uh oh. Didn't even see it coming. Uh oh. Oh, I thought that one coming. I can do anything about it. I hope no one gets a blue shell. That's all that's on oh, That's it, right? A blue shell shouldn't really exist in the game. Why not? It's like a parking ticket. It's like socialist. <laughs> Damn. I know, dude. Damn. Diff. Oh. Damn. I'm not coming back from this. Uh oh. Uh oh. How's it looking right now? Looks like I'm paying for dinner. You know, that oh, I'm already fun. so far behind. Yeah? Okay. Uh, I think 46 weeks, no drinking, no smoking right now. It's been interesting. I started vlogging. Look at that. That's a good thing that came out of it. Yeah, it's it's done January 5th, my challenge. Oh, whoa, look at you, eh? Let me not distract you. Let me get focused right here. So what do you think about the war in the Ukraine right now? Shout out my guy, Oleg. My first international employee was in the Ukraine, and then he had to stop working because he got enlisted into the war. Or are you just trying to distract me right now? Is that what you're asking? I, I, I want to bring up the other conflict. Huh? Oh, that's too much. That's yeah, too it's much. Too, too much. Yo, you what know, do you mean you don't have an opinion on it? It was interesting. We're doing like a corporate racism project right now. And they had like an event and they just did, they put a, a Jewish woman and a Palestinian woman on stage for a conversation about race. It was a, it was a very deep conversation, man. I think it's a, it's a rough state of the world that we're in, but everybody's just got to approach each other with compassion. You know, people, like we said in the, in the episode, people first, you know, and um, I don't know, it's, it's a rough situation. I just hit a banana, what the fuck? Now I'm in second? Oh, no way. Stop asking me these questions, man. You're getting me distracted. So I think the Raptors are gonna like make the playoffs this year? Stop, bro. Got you. <gasps> no, no. You're so lucky. Oh, yeah, I won. Yeah, no, it's yeah. not enough, though. Oh, my gosh. You, you know what sucks? Being in the middle. That's when you get hit the most. I know. Everyone's attacking it. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll get hit with a blue shell. Eventually. I'm sure you get lucky. Yeah, it's a long race, you know? Oh, no. I'm done for this game. Oh, oh my God. No. <laughs> oh, man. This is messy. Got you. Oh! All right, so I won uh, 50% of the time. Yeah, so did I. Oh my gosh. Nice. Nice. But you still you edge me on points. All right, let's see. Oh, that was close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now good. I see why you were talking shit. Well, I don't know, man. Yeah. Like, you don't have to be pretty good to beat me. Yeah. And you know what? Like, it What's came that? down to that first race, that like little. Yeah, literally. Little inch. That one, because if you did win that, then. But I bet you we points. play again, I win. If anyone has ever told you that you cannot play an excessive amount of video games, but also be productive, Exhibit A. Exhibit B.